How are you? Today, our topic is minutes of the meeting. What is a meeting? Obviously, it's very easy to answer. Whenever some people have some problem, they get together and try to look for some solution. Or whenever they want to discuss some topic, discuss some problem, they sit together and discuss with each other and look for some results, some solutions. Similarly, in an organization, in a company, certain, at certain times, people want to discuss certain problems. They need to make foundation. They need to make certain decisions. They need to take certain plannings. They need to take stock of their working. And they have a lot of reasons to sit together and discuss. So, they need certain meetings to discuss such problems. And these meetings are formed by, these meetings are taken by, carried out by certain people whom we call committees or we call task force. There are two different things we will be discussing. So, meetings and task force operate within an organization and within companies and their basic purpose is as I just said to discuss certain problems, certain issues, make decisions and think about their future plannings. Sometimes certain meetings are required by the law. And sometimes certain meetings are held because of certain arising problem. So today we are going to discuss minutes of the meeting. Minutes of the meetings are the written record of these meetings or these task force. Obviously since minutes of the meetings are written record, so we have to see that how these minutes are written. Since we are studying business communication, we are studying written and oral communication. So since minutes have to be minutes have to be written, so we want the minutes to be discussed from the writing perspective. First of all, I would like to discuss different types of meeting that what type of meeting do we hold in organization so we have meetings for example statutory because the law demands it this is a type of meeting which is held because law demanded because we are under uh, we are working under a certain law and law demands us to hold such meeting at certain at certain timings. So, in these meetings, shareholders, creditors, directors, counselors meet and discuss about certain issues and make certain resolutions, make certain decisions, discuss certain problems. Then we have managerial meetings. Managerial meetings are held to discuss the progress of 
an organization or the company's affairs. So, in this managerial meeting, people are informed of the policy of the company, some policy that is being initiated. So, the basic purpose is to inform of policy, to brief, to delegate tasks to certain people, to discuss problems, to reach group decision. I mean, certain decisions are made in these types of meeting. We have creative meetings. Creative meetings are very important for departments like sales, like marketing. Obviously, they are equally important for other departments, but they help people to generate ideas, to open up new possibilities or avenues of action. I mean, whenever organization want to make some sort of planning for their future, in terms of increasing their business or explore certain new markets, they hold such meetings, creative meetings. So in this meeting, what they do is they brainstorm around different ideas of what the firm could decide, design or manufacture or produce or sometimes certain advertisement campaigns are discussed that how they can best market their products or services. So, these are types of meeting. Number one, as we just discussed, is statutory meeting. It is held because the law demands it. Then we have managerial meeting. It is held because it discusses the progress of the company, whether it's progressing or there are some limitation, restraints, etc. And then we have creative meeting. Creative meeting are held to generate ideas to make new plannings. Then we have other type of meeting. We have negotiating meetings. The basic purpose of this meeting is to reach a solution to a problem. Maybe there are some problems. There are two sides having different opinion over some issue. So, a meeting is held and uh, there is a negotiation which takes place and some decision is reached at. So, management and trade union to agree on pay. So, in these types of meeting, normally the top management, trade union or certain employees affairs are discussed. Then we have journal public meeting. The basic function of this meeting is to report back to a group membership or to discuss certain other matters of public interest. And in these type of meeting, annual journal meeting in which shareholders or club members meet and uh, public inquiries are discussed and planning and proposals are made. So, these are the basic types of meeting. These meetings are held by different time schedule. Some meetings take place uh, every week. Some meeting takes place every fortnight, two weeks. Some meeting take place every month. So, uh, the timing depends on the importance or the need of these meeting. Maybe at certain times, meeting may be, a certain meeting may be called at, uh, at uh, shorter intervals. It depends on the need of the meeting that some issues have risen and people of an organization want to sit together and discuss certain issues. They may need to make certain decision or they may have to make certain they may have to make certain uh, decision or they may have to pass certain resolutions. So, these are five types of meeting. In a meeting, obviously, there is a certain structure like an organization meeting has also a certain structure. It has certain number of uh, positions held by certain people and these 
these people have certain roles, they perform certain roles. For example, members role, the committee normally comprises the chairman, the secretary, the treasurer and the committee members. So normally in any committee these five positions are found. And they have the certain rules to perform. For example, so far as the chairman's role is concerned, the role of the chairman is to coordinate the work of the committee. He is basically coordinating whatever the issue is. He is working as coordinator. He is working as the leader of the committee. He is the guide of the committee. Whenever there are certain disputes, there are certain problems, difference of opinion, so it is the chairman who has the right to coordinate among people and to make a final version in some extent in some cases. So he is like an umpire or guide or leader in a committee. Second to chairman is the secretary's role. The basic purpose of the secretary is to carry out the administrative work of the committee. It is he who uh, does all the administrative work. So jotting down the, uh, the minutes of the meeting, all the proceeding of the meeting is a secretary's task. It, is, it comes under his role. Then we have the treasurer's role. The treasurer's role as the name is clear, makes it clear is to monitor the committee financial activities. All the financial responsibilities are the responsibilities of the treasurer. Then we have the members of the committee. The basic role of the members of the committee is to participate at meeting and do work delegated to him or her. I mean they are the people who are delegated, assigned some work and they carry out that work. Contrary to committees, the task force, as I just discussed in the beginning, task force are a temporary type of a committee. They are assigned a certain task and when they complete that certain task, they are disbanded. Whereas committees are, are, the, uh, are the group of people they remain for a longer period of time. These committee, uh, these committees remain longer period of periods of time, and maybe the member changes, the body of the organization of the committee changes. Maybe the uh, the chairman is changed, members are changed, the position of secretary or the position of treasurer is changed, but the committee remains the same. They are. They are for different purposes. As the body of the committee or the administration of the committee is different from an organization, the language used in committees is also different. There are certain terms that are normally used and we also need to know those terms. Since we are to discuss the minutes of the meeting, Minutes of the meeting is a written record of the meeting. So we also need to know uh, some of the important terms that are being used in committees. Look at these special terms like ad hoc, advisory, agenda, AGM, apologies. Apologies for in every committee there are certain members and when any of the member any of the members is uh, absent, uh, there is apology for his absence. So we have chairman, chairman's agenda, you can see the definition written after these words. So these words and some certain other terms are very important to know as you want to write the written record of the meeting and to write the written record of the meeting you need to be well familiar with these terms instead of going into longer sentence explanation if you simply use these terms uh, you will be giving what you want to say so 
you need to make yourself familiar with all these terms which are very frequently used in, in uh, writing minutes of the meeting and which are very frequently used with reference to committees and meetings. We are not discussing exactly meeting. Our main emphasis is to the minutes of the meeting. Obviously, if we are to discuss meeting, we may be discussing certain, some, discussing certain other features of meeting, but I, I want you to know only the minutes of the meeting and uh, since to be aware of these uh, minutes of the meeting, you also need to know different types of meeting and the, the, these terms. So, I have uh, discussed these things here. There are two types of meeting, informal and formal. Informal meeting is just like discussion and uh, the minutes are also in, are jotted down very informally. It does have its own format, it has a date, it has time, it has a place name, it gives uh, the summary of the discussion. So the minutes include date of the meeting, time of the meeting, place of the meeting, the name of the presiding officer, a list of those present and frequently those absent. And the time of adjournment, discussion as I told you, are summarized. So, in informal meeting, usually these minutes are signed by the person presiding. I mean, the presiding officer signs these minutes, then the minutes are duplicated and its copies are sent to each person who attended that meeting. So, let's have a look at a meeting of informal type. So, presiding, name Ahmed, present and so and so, absent so and so. After calling the meeting to order at 3.15 p.m., the president asked the treasurer for a brief report. The president asked Zara Zaman, chairperson of the investment committee for the committee recommendation. The president asked Mr. Ali, the club broker, to comment. So, I have given just the first sentences of the paragraph. So, you see that how the summary is given of the uh, discussion. You see that very informal style is used in this, but it does give the format like a letter. Very important is the place at the top of the letter, the place uh, is given. Normally, at the place is there in the heading. So, timing, date, etc., the time of the adjournment and all these things are given in this type of meeting. So, this is how informal uh, meetings are reported and how the minutes of informal meetings are given. Contrary to informal, uh, we have formal meetings. Formal meetings follows parliamentary procedure, somewhat different from the informal. They do not include any discussion. Only motion, resolutions, committee assignments, reports, specific accomplishment are included. And topical headings are used for easy reference. As you will just see, topical references are used for easy references. And uh, how the recorder has briefly summarized a speaker's remark is there. As I just said that they are different from informal meeting. So, every aspect of this meeting is worded very carefully. The name of the person who has made the motion is recorded. Even the person who has seconded the this resolution or the motion is also included in these in this type of uh, meeting. So, this is different from informal meeting. The formal meeting has, uh, it does not have the summary of the discussion. It only has motion, resolutions, committee assignment, etc. The name of the person making 
motion is written and the person who has seconded the motion is also written. So, it does have the same uh, information, I mean it does have the place of the meeting, time of the meeting, uh, the adjourn time of the adjournment, all those things in it, but it's different I, as I just told you. Uh, here we do not give the summary, only the main resolution passed are discussed in this type of uh, meeting. So, let's have a look at this type of a meeting. Time and place of any time and place, the regular monthly meeting of the historical commercial club of Lahore was called to order by the President Naim Ahmad on Friday, February 8, 2006 at 2 p.m. in the dinner room. So, uh, you can see that the format of uh, form meeting in so far as the date, timing, place, etc. is concerned is quite similar. But the way this type of meeting is reported is different as I just said and saying it repeatedly that it does not have the summary of the discussion. So, let's look at this as I just read it. Minutes of the last meeting, it is the topic. So, the explanation is given after it. The minutes of the last meeting were read and approved. Then comes the next topic, treasurer's report. The following report was given by Fatma Hanif, the treasurer, and then report is given. Then we have another topic, old business. It was moved, seconded, and voted that a booklet describing local commercial site of historical interest be written and published by the club and distributed to local school. Here you see that topic is given and no discussion is made. How many people agree to it and how many people disagree to it is not mentioned here. Only the decision is given. Similarly, new business. After discussion about improving the club's ability to advise the local media about its activities, a committee consisting of Fatma and Eve, Chairperson Sarah Ahmed Iqbal was appointed. So, again you see that the decision is given. Program name Ahmed introduced Maz Munir, an archaeologist at City University, so and so. As you will see that, I have just uh, given the topic and a few very first sentence relating to that topic, not a given full explanation of the topic. It was just meant to give you an idea that how this formal minister of the meetings are recorded. Then you see at the end of this, the meeting was adjourned at 5.15 p.m. So, this is an example of formal meeting and how the minutes of the formal meetings are jotted down and written. You see that they are different from informal meeting. In formal meeting, we use normally reported speech. So, the knowledge of using reported speech for writing minutes of the form, formal meeting is very important. And the next thing to uh, narration is voice. Normally, passive voice is used in this form of communication and we will discuss uh, about a certain aspect of direct narration at the end. So, this is how we jot down, we write, we write these types of meeting, the formal meeting and informal meeting. But here we have to discuss that how do we produce these meetings, the planning steps etc. that we have been discussing. So, we have different types of minutes. Number one is resolution minutes. Resolution minutes are normally taken when meetings are attended by some directors. In these types of meetings, normally decisions are, resolutions are given. No references made to disagreement, how people reach at the certain, certain conclusion is not referred to uh, in this type of uh, minutes. 
So, simply, simply the decision is given without any reference to any disagreement. It means that people have reached that uh, decision by some sort of voting, right? So, let us have an example that how this type of uh, this uh, resolution minutes are written. For example, the, in a certain meeting, people discuss about closing down a certain branch in a certain area. And uh, after having discussed the whole matter, they have resolved the issue. They have written resolution minutes. So, you can see that how they have summarized it. Five Liberty branch. It was resolved that the company's Liberty branch be closed with effect from 31st May 2006 and the premises, fixtures and fittings offered for sales. So, such minutes no, usually have the word resolve. This shows that people reached to the decision by some vote without any reference to disagreement as I just said. So, narrative minutes are the second type of minutes. Contrary to resolution minutes, narrative minutes give a fuller story of the meeting. They, they, are, they explain the whole proceeding of the meeting. In fact, they tell the story of the meeting. So, they give full view of the uh, meeting, how discussion uh, led to a certain deci uh, decision. So, this whole is recorded in the, this type of minutes. Narrative minutes are recorded in reported speech. As I just said, we use the reported speech in narrative minutes. And we, instead of uh, giving a direct speech, we use indirect speech. For example, we say that the chairman said, or Mr. Naim said, instead of saying what he said, instead of giving a reported speech, we said. When decisions are reached by a vote, expressions such as it was January agreed that it was therefore decided that are normally used. We make the tone of uh, the record very objective and neutral and to make the tone of the, these type of meeting objective and neutral, we, as we use uh, reported speech, we also use passive form because passive forms is more objective. You may recall that when we were discussing principles of business communication, uh, we, seven C's I mean, we did discuss that we need to use active voice. We need to give our verbs action. But we also discussed that uh, in certain situation, we use passive form of the verb. So, passive form of the verb gives objectivity to our action and beside that, uh, it gives a nat neutral to tone to our verb. So, in this type of uh, minutes, when we are jotting down, we use passive voice. So, beside uh, this uh, resolution minutes and beside these narrative minutes which give the whole story, we have action minutes. Action minutes, some busy committees sometimes like to introduce a right hand blank column beside the minute in order to put a designated committee member's name against a particular task to be carried out. For example, just picking up a certain topic, six annual game. The secretary was asked to seek approval to use the company sports ground again. And then we have a right hand box and which says action by secretary. So, this is how different types of minutes are recorded. We have discussed minutes of the meeting today. And as we have seen that there are two types of meeting, formal meeting and informal meetings. And... Uh, we use different style for jotting down different type of types of meeting. In formal meeting, we need more objective. So, to be more objective, we use uh, passive voice. 
and we use indirect narration. Here I think that we should discuss some aspect of indirect narration. Indirect narration is a very important thing uh, for writing good English and uh, so far as these uh, uh, minutes of the meetings are concerned, these are very important. Unless you have very good idea of what indirect narration is, uh, you cannot write minutes of the meeting. Indirect narration is as is very clear that when we uh, you when we report somebody's exact word in uh, in our own way, we are using indirect. A narration. When we are using somebody's word in his own words, we are using direct words. In meeting, we use indirect narration. In indirect narration, as we have just seen that, the we have two clauses. One is the reporting clause and the other is the reported clause. I'm sure that you all know the rules of this uh, change of narration from direct to indirect. But the rules that normally are taught at our schools and colleges do not discuss in detail those features which are required to be used at this level. At this level mean when we are uh, writing minutes of the meeting because here we need to use language in a bit complex way. So, here the, report, uh, the reporting of the minutes in indirect needs knowledge of more complex things than uh, we already know. For example, just look at this one sentence. I'm sorry, I'm late. I missed the bus. He said. So, I know that you can very easily turn this direct sentence into indirect. You will say that he said that he was sorry, he was late, he had missed the bus. No doubt that it's a very correct version of the uh, direct sentence that I just uttered. But this reported speech version is very dull. This can be helpful in passing our examination in which we simply are required to convert one direct sentence into indirect sentence. So far as the technicalities are concerned, to make it correct indirect narration, this is quite correct. But for a good writer, this is not a good indirect sentence. So let's look at this sentence dealt differently. He apologized for being late. He had missed the bus. Now if you look at this sentence, this sentence is concise and this sentence is giving a better idea of the main meaning of the sentence. It is a reported speech but the saying verb is a change with a better saying verb. So you are told that if the sentence of the reported speech is assertive, said is not changed in indirect speech, said to is changed into told. If the reported speech uh, has an interrogative sentence, change said or say into any uh, any question verb like inquire or asked. Similarly, if the reported sentence is an imperative, change it according to the nature of the imperative sentence in order or request. To some extent, at a lower level, this is all right, no problem with, with uh, indirect narration with these. But at a higher level, at the complex level, when you are reporting such uh, things, you need to have a grip of the uh, grip of uh, the saying verb that we normally use. We, you you will see this. So I want that we just uh, discuss not in detail, 
some rules of indirect narration. In indirect narration, first of all, you need to know how pronouns are changed. How pronouns are changed. For example, you know if the pronouns in reported speech are first person, second person or third person, how they are changed. We all know that the first person changes according to the subject of the reporting speech, the second according to the object and the third has no change. Right? This is how we change and the pronouns. Obviously, there are certain complex sentences which need to be discussed for change of pronoun, but these, these changes are normally very easy and if we know that first uh, the subject of uh, uh, the, or the first person in, in the reported speech go according to the subject of the reporting speech, we can change all the first person pronoun wherever they are found in the sentence and if we know that the second person pronoun wherever they are found in the reported speech they are changed with the person of the reported second person with the object of the reported speech we can change them and we don't have any problem with the third person third person pronoun remain the same the next thing to this uh, change of pronoun is the change of tense. Change of tense is concerned with verbs. I mean, I don't want to discuss the, the forms of the verb. Let's uh, discuss it in the same way as we did at school. First form, second form and third form. Change of tense in the reported speech takes place when our reporting speeches in the past. So, when your reporting speech is in the past, we need to require certain changes to make certain changes in the reported verb. What you do is change first form of the verb into second. If there is second form already change it in, into third form. For example, he said, I am going to Lahore. You are changing it. He said he was going to Lahore. So you have changed first form am into second was. And let's see if there was already a second form. He said I wrote a letter. Change it. He said that he had written a letter. You see that write goes into wrote and wrote goes into written. So this is a very uh, easy change. If you just take care of these three things, whenever there is a, a, a reporting speech in the past, you need to change the verb of the reported speech. When you changing narration, first into second and second into third. The next thing to it is the distancing effect. I mean time adverbial. Time adverbials are very important. For example, if you are reporting that and the, a certain action, he said that the, a certain action would be taken ne uh, next week. If the minutes were written within that week, it's quite okay. The next day uh, of the meeting, the minutes were written and the sentence goes like this, that the action would be taken next week. It will be okay. This sentence will be okay. But if the minutes are written three weeks after the meeting, so in that case next week will be meaningless and create problem. So we need to change it into following week so that we can make a good reference. So when you are dealing with adverbial in indirect narration, be very careful, change today to that day, now, then, here, there, this, that, these, for example, into and this to that, these to those, tomorrow to the next day and these are very easy changes and you've been discussing it. But when you are writing minutes, you need to be well versed with all these things. So be very careful about uh, these timings, these timing adverbs. So 
first you have to think of the pronouns take care with the pronouns then you have to take care of the tense of the verb remember whenever it's in past reporting speech is in past you have to change first into second of the reported and second into third of the reported verb then we have the fourth rule conveying the tone of the direct speech actually this is just meant for this minutes of the meeting purpose whenever you are reporting minutes of the meeting you say that the president said the chairperson said the secretary said the treasurer said a certain member said if you are using this uh, this type of narration you are actually writing the minutes in a very very careless manner you need to give the way a certain a uh, certain sentence was said and as i just showed you in the beginning that instead of saying he said i i'm sorry he said he was sorry he he, he had missed the bus and when i changed that sentence to he po- apologized uh, apologized for being uh, late uh, as he missed the bus he had missed the bus so you need to have good knowledge of saying verb saying verb that the verb that express the event or the situation for example instead of saying he said that he would not he would not uh, favor a certain a certain uh, suggestion so instead of saying he said you can say he strongly denied he strongly uh, disagreed or it can be he strongly confirmed so when you use these saying verbs you can be very effective you can uh, report these minutes uh, in a way as if you are showing a picture to your uh, readers so today we have uh, discuss minutes of the meeting minutes of the meetings are the written record of the uh, meetings or any task force minutes of the meetings are of two types for example they are written for formal meetings and as well as they are written for informal meetings formal meetings they are resolution minutes resolution minutes actually do not give summary they just give that how what decisions were taken there are other types of minutes which are narrative minutes narrative minutes actually give the full picture of the meeting they tell the story that took place in a meeting and most important about this type of uh, meeting is that we use indirect narration and we use passive voice and as i just explained few of the rules i i know that i have just uh, referred to these uh, rules i have not discussed uh, these rules in details but i'm sure that uh, you can you already know it or if there is any problem with these uh, rules you can consult any good grammar available in the market and you can master all these rules but beside these rule what what is more important here is to be well versed with the style style is more important in writing minutes of the meeting especially these narrative minutes of the meeting as you have seen that uh, how do we make them lively instead of that wooden style wooden dull uh, style in which we are just uh, writing he said she said etc etc we can make our writings lively by uh, bringing in very appropriate uh, saying verbs so for saying verbs you can you can write good minutes of the meeting and also whenever you are reading literature or some other think of certain saying words so saying word will surely help you in improving your your minutes of the meeting beside 
indirect narration that is used in in narrative minutes we also use passive voice passive voice is very important because it makes our writing more objective it uh, makes our writing neutral as i just said that don't think that i'm disagreeing with my own statement when i uh, which i gave when we when we were discussing seven c's in which we said that we must uh, use active voice instead of passive voice active voice must be used when we are writing letters and uh, this is a very important means of uh, bringing bringing pers personal touch to our communication but in certain situation uh, we need passive voice passive voice obviously when we are um, uh, when we are giving some decisions a decision which uh, may be may be not acceptable or liked by people or we are showing giving policies we are uh, uh, giving rules i mean all those things in which the writer of the writer of the uh, communication wants to detach himself from the from the from the communication we need to use passive voice so remember that for meeting you need to master these two types of grammar's uh, rule direct rules of narration and rules of passive voice because they help you in writing good minutes of the meeting so today we have discussed the meetings and uh, how these meetings are recorded informal meeting and formal meeting and then different types of uh minutes resolutions uh minute narrative minutes action minutes and we also have discussed rules of some rules of direct speech and some passive voice. one thing about passive voice i have seen that most of the people make a passive sentence in a very very dry manner bringing in the subject a phrase in every sentence you need to take care that in passive sentence we do not normally use subject phrase except in few cases we do have discussed this thing in when we were discussing seven c's so i hope that to, with today's discussion you must have a better idea of what uh, minutes of the meeting are how they are written and what about a direct narration and some aspect of passive narration so today we finish our lecture here and in the next lecture we'll start some other topic so until then khuda hafiz